Hey GBC family, well tonight we're going to be looking at this passage in 1 Peter chapter 3 as we continue our series on Stay the Course, Following Christ at All Cost. So I'm really excited about our passage uh, that we're going to study tonight. I want you to think for a moment, have you ever gotten one of those party invitations that says, you know, what, where, why, when, how, it just kind of gives you all of the details. Well, as we focus in on this passage in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 22, I want you to kind of think about that. And as we think about the what, uh, what we'll hear in the what for this passage is our mission, to give an answer for our hope. And the when is always the how is with gentleness, reverence, and a good conscience. And the why is because it's the very reason that we're still here. So think about those things as we read. First, we're going to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 16. And then we'll tackle the rest of the passage a little bit later. All right, I'm reading in verse 8. To sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for this very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his life, his lips from speaking deceit. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears attend to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. And do not fear their intimidation, and do not be troubled. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you yet with gentleness and reverence, and keep a good conscience, so that in the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your, your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Well, that's, there's a lot in that passage here, but I want to start by talking about our purpose. If you remember, that's, that's kind of the what of this passage. You know, have you ever been given a task or a responsibility and just felt that you were born for that very moment. Maybe like in that moment or, or in that season of your life, you, were, uh, you felt like your skill set and, and everything that you need are just exactly what was needed for that position. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's your job. Maybe you feel that the job that you have right now, you were just born or meant for that, for that job. Or perhaps it's a place of service here in the church. You feel that the way that God has gifted you uh, is that you are just the right person for that position. Well, as Christians, we are all a, a tool in God's kingdom. And when you have just the right tool, kind of like when you're working around the house, if you've ever started to use a tool that's that's maybe not the best thing for the job, you've, uh, you have felt that, that it was starting to hinder your progress. Well, but then when you have the, compared that to when you have the right tool, it's just, it just makes all the difference in the world. Well, we are all different, but we, God uses us just, uh, just as He does uh, uh, that right tool. We all have individual jobs as in our place in the body of Christ according to those specific gifts and talents that we have. But we also share the joint responsibility of being a light for Christ. And that we know from Matthew 28 is the Great Commission. And we are charged to share and defend the faith. And it's really it's for this very task that we are still here on earth as Christians to share the good news of Christ with the lost and dying world around us. Think about it. If God didn't want to use us or didn't have a plan for us, just as soon as we were saved, He would, he would uh, take us up to heaven uh, immediately. But no, He leaves us here because He has a very important and special task for us and a job for us. So it's the reason why you're here, the reason why all of us are still here. And so that's why in this passage, Peter uh, says to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. Now, if we were to back up in the passage previous uh, to this, um, you can see there's a contrast here because uh, a few verses earlier, uh, Peter is talking about he's encouraging women, but this can be applied to all Christians as well, to live a life that can win someone over without words. And this is very important, but there will be a time when somebody asks us or we are given an opportunity to stand up 
for our faith. We must take advantage of that opportunity by expecting it. You know, whenever you expect something, you're prepared for it. You're not surprised by it. Instead, you're studied and you're ready. Well, don't, friend, don't let... Don't ever let anyone catch you off guard and miss a chance to share the faith and the hope that you have. You know, companies and businesses and organizations, churches, societies, all share something in common, a mission statement. And these mission statements are, are put in place so that that organization knows what they're working towards and why. So I'm gonna, we'll play a little guessing game here, and I want you, I'm going to read a mission statement and see if you can, if you can guess which company uh, this is describing. This uh, one mission statement is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Do you know which one that is? Maybe you've already guessed it. If not, it's Google. That's their mission statement at Google. What about this one? Maybe, uh, hopefully you can get this one. This one resonates with me a lot. To be a place where a kid can be a kid. Did you know that one? Chuck E. Cheese. My childhood right there in a nutshell. Okay, what about this one? To give people the power to share and make the world more open and connected. Facebook. All right, what about this one? This place is a biblical community of disciples of Jesus Christ who desire to be vessels through whom God works to advance His kingdom here and to the ends of the earth in the power of the Holy Spirit, all for the glory of God. Did you know that one? That's our mission statement here at Germantown Baptist Church. You know, the, mission, the purpose of a mission statement is twofold. One is so that the individual knows what the ultimate goal is and how to work towards it. And second, it's so that the work of the organization is able to defend and explain its work to others outside of its walls. So it has both an internal uh, implication and also an external application. And without a mission statement, there would be a, a lack of, of direction or explanation for the work of an organization. And as Christians, we must have a mission statement. We need one both individually, but also one uh, together corporately as a church. And so when Peter says here in this passage, chapter 3, verse 15, to, uh, to be prepared to give an answer, he's not just referring to the act of verbally sharing Christ with someone, though that's important, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. He's also referring to our defense of the faith. Uh, a term for that that you may recognize as Christian apologetics. Now, it's not talking about giving an apology for the Christian faith. Rather, it's defending what we believe. And someone who is a Christian apologetic is someone who studied and prepared to give an answer for our beliefs and to stand up for why we believe them. Now, there are people whose whole career is in a, a Christian apologetic, but we really all need to be prepared and able to defend what we believe in. So, as we talk about the other part of giving an answer, uh, always being, being ready, uh, let's ask the question, how can we prepare ourselves for questions about our faith? How can we always be ready? Well, one thing is to have a statement ready to share with someone who asks you why you believe. And in doing that, you need to make sure that that statement is inclusive. A lot of times if you're put on the spot or caught off guard, you'll, you may uh, forget or leave out some important details. Make sure to in include the, the fact that, that we are created by God and, and God uh, intended this world to be good, but, there's, uh, but instead sin entered the world and separated uh, us between uh, man and God. But then uh, Christ came and he, uh, he died, uh, even though he lived a perfect life, he died on, uh, as a, uh, taking our punishment uh, for our sins. And three days later, uh, as we know, he was raised again, which gives us hope uh, through the resurrection. So make sure that, that your statement is, is inclusive and speaks to the whole of our faith. Um, and secondly, avoid using Christian jargon in your faith. Now, there are a lot of kind of churchy words that we use a lot of times as Christians, and, and we're used to these words like salvation, redemption, justification, sanctification, um, all, all of these things that, that you know, probably when, when you heard me say those, you, you knew and resonated with those. But, if, but a lot of those terms maybe aren't used as, um, as commonly in 
uh, outside of the walls of Christianity. So, so try, try to steer clear of some of that terminology just so that you can uh, be relatable with the person that you're talking about. Uh, another important thing about this is to familiarize yourself with the method of evangelism. And this goes back to the tools analogy. So when a repairman goes to work on something, he doesn't leave his tools at home. Uh, instead, uh, he, he carries them with him. And having a method or a plan of salvation uh, ready is just like having that right tool in your bag. Uh, you know, one method that we have practiced and talked about as a church is the three circles. Uh, you maybe uh, before that you have heard of or, or use the ABC method where you admit that you're a sinner. You believe that Christ died and was raised from the dead and you confess your sin to God and ask Him to save you. Um, there are many other um, kind of evangelism methods out there, and, but, but the, the important thing is to have one that's ready and that you can communicate well. And lastly, to personalize your message. You can do this by using elements of the other person's life or condition. Chances are the conversation that, that, that you uh, are having with the person where you're given this opportunity to share your faith um, may be sprung off of something that, that, they, that this person said. And you can use that as, uh, as an example to connect with them. Or, but, but you can also use elements from your own life. As, as you speak with them, relate to them, and be, be personal. So, you know, when Peter said, always be prepared, he really means it. You, you never know when you'll have that golden opportunity to share with someone else. If we think about in the New Testament, Paul and Silas, they probably didn't know that the night that they sat in prison, that they would have this opportunity. But yet, after a violent earthquake came and shook the the, the doors of the cell open. The jail, jailer was, was there, ready to take his own life, thinking that all of the prisoners had escaped. And Paul told him, don't harm yourself. We're all here. And the jailer fell to his feet. Do you remember what he said? He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Paul and Silas were ready to give an answer. And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. We need to be ready. We need to be, be ready and on the lookout for when we have those opportunities for when someone comes to us and asks us, what is it that, that's, that gives you hope? How come you're able to respond to these uh, situations in, in a way that has hope and, and purpose? And you can have that chance to share with them. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, familiar verse here says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all those in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So let's now go to our next uh, set of verses in chapter 3 of 1 Peter. We're going to read verses 17 through 22 as Peter kind of turns a corner here. He says, verse 17, For it is better if God should will it so that you suffer for doing what is right rather than for doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh and being made alive in the spirit in which he also went also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few that is eight persons were brought safely through the water corresponding to that baptism now saves you not the removal of dirt from the flesh but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who was at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven, after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. So there's a lot in this passage, I realize, but if you consider, consider who Peter is talking to, uh, maybe we can get a better perspective. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about our perspective in the first part after having we talked about our, uh, after we talked about our purpose. So our perspective is, um, if we think about who Peter is talking to, he's talking to uh, Jews who were facing persecution for their faith. You know, they needed encouragement. And they needed purpose. And so Peter's trying to help them understand that in their sufferings, they are identifying with Christ. 
who also suffered. So Peter points out Jesus, who he calls the just, died for the unjust so that he may bring them bring him to God. And that's us. We were once unjust, but Christ died for us so that, so that that separation that I was talking about earlier could be um, taken away and we could be uh, reunited with God. And it's through and because of, of Jesus' suffering that we are here today reflecting on these wonderful words. The Jews that, that were reading this letter could take heart in knowing that through their sufferings, God was being glorified. And in somehow, some way, through their struggles, it, God was accomplishing His will. Now, we too often face persecution. And it may not be in the same way that the Jews did in the New Testament, but still, um, Christians all around us, are, um, and maybe you've experienced this too, we're being, uh, our, Christians are being silenced and sidelined and ridiculed. Now, you may have experienced this personally, you know, especially in our toxic culture on social media. You can't even put a Bible verse on without being attacked like sharks who despise Christianity. But you can take heart, just as Peter was telling these Jews uh, in the New Testament, to know that through your sufferings, you identify with Christ. Paul spoke through this, to this too in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 5-7. through seven. He said, For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and, and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that you, as you are sharers of our sufferings, so also you are sharers of our comfort. So kind of closing out here, I want to zoom out a little bit, little by little, and, and see how this passage that we've studied tonight uh, fits into the rest of First Peter. So as Peter speaks to suffering, he's connecting this to the rest of the book where, uh, where he, as an encouragement uh, to Jewish Christians who are facing suffering and persecution. And, and we can apply this encouragement to our faith journey today. Friend, whatever your struggle is today, you can be encouraged that God is using that to strengthen your faith in Him. In chapter 1 uh, of First Peter, uh, Peter talked about, he compared our suffering to gold, which is tested by fire. Now notice that he doesn't diminish the fire. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't uh, diminish the heat uh, by downplaying, uh, downplaying the struggles. Our struggles are real and they're tough, but, but just as gold goes through, uh, through the fire, it is purified. Now, Peter calls, uh, says that our faith is of even greater worth than gold because eventually gold will perish, but our faith will last forever. So we can see how this passage in 1 Peter chapter 3 fits in with the rest of the book as just as an encouragement to Christians who are facing trials uh, and tribulations and suffering, maybe persecution, but anything that, that you're experiencing you can take hope in knowing that you identify with Christ through this. So how does, a, how does this passage uh, fit into the whole of the Bible? Well, we've talked about how Peter said that the, uh, to always be ready to give an answer for the hope that you have. We've talked specifically about, how, about ways to give that answer, but really, where is all of that found? All of that comes from the Word of God, from the Bible. The Bible is our answer. It's, it's the Bible that contains the gospel, the good news of, of Jesus Christ that gives us hope. It's the Bible that tells us how to live. It's the Bible that encourages us. Through the Bible, God gives us strength to carry on. There are so many times when, when you will uh, just be defeated and exhausted, tired, and, and just worn out, and you won't even have, have enough strength. You'll be at your end. But yet, through the Bible, through this passage, just as Peter was encouraging these Christians, they were facing uh, awful persecution and suffering. We can be encouraged. We can, uh, we can take a stand for God's Word. We can, we can have the strength to stand up uh, to know that God is good. He loves you. He is working His will out through your life. And just as, as Paul said in Romans 8, 28, He's working all things together for the good of those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. So tonight, you have the strength to stand because of God's Word and of His goodness. It's not always going to be easy, 
In fact, it's going to be hard a lot of times. This has been a hard year, 2020. I think all of us would, would agree with that. But we can know that uh, through God's, uh, through the power of God, we can get through anything through His strength. Not on our own, but, but through that and through the encouragement that He offers in His Word. Let me close this in a word of prayer and then uh, we'll be finished. Dear God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for the encouragement that it brings, Lord. Just even, even in this time now, Lord, you've encouraged my spirit to know that I have the strength to stand through anything, God. We will face the, the fires of life that, that this world brings, God. This is a broken place, God, and there are so many things that, that we will face that will defeat and discourage us. But God, I thank you for your word that brings us back and helps us to stand. Now, God, help us to stand confidently and firmly and boldly, to stand on and to stand up for your word, God, to be ready uh, at all times to give, that, give a reason for the hope. God, help me personally and everyone that's listening to never be caught off guard for when we have an opportunity to share about the wonderful and the good news that you've given us, God. Help me to be ready and faithful for those opportunities. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the cross. And Lord, it's in your Son's precious and holy name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.